This was my EDC today, and I realized I never did an up-close video of it. I think I did a collection selection of it. Uh, but I figured why not put it in front of the camera with a little bit of light and take a look at it. This is the Hinderer XM24 Bowie. I think it was produced in 2015 or so, Generation 2 or 3. I'm not so good with all that stuff. Yeah, I know, I need to do better research. But uh, just looking on Blade Forums before I started rolling the camera, I believe this is a Gen 2. I'll just stick with that. And I do believe it was made in 2015. Um, but I could be wrong about both of those things. <laughs> this is pre-triway pivot. And to me, it's the best looking... Um, man, I just love the Bowie on this. The blade shape. Now, um, they have the XM24 out right now in Bowie. And they also have the half-track, which... Oh, man, the half-track Bowie is a nice-looking knife a uh, nice looking blade and i think when they make that into a full track it will be a real temptation for me uh, but i think the best expression of the hinderer shape uh, bowie is in the 24 because there's room enough to sort of fully express the lines in a graceful way that feels slightly truncated on the xm 18 uh three and a half inch i used to have one of those uh I guess it was Gen 5 pre triway pivot when they made uh, them a few years back, 2016, I think it was. And I got one and I liked it a lot, but I ended up trading it uh, with a couple of other things to get this. Um, and uh, it was a good, good decision uh, for me personally. I just find this blade so pleasing. I love Bowie blades and I get really into proportions and lines, and um, this one to me just nails it. It's got a little bit of the SOG, the Mac V SOG Bowie shape with the, with the you know that that classic Bowie shape that came out of uh, the Vietnam War, and that SOG knives built their brand on uh, initially, and um, that double peak is really pleasing to me. This long clip uh, with the swedge. And um, and just the rest of the knife. It is incredible. Uh, I bought this on the secondary market a few years back and uh, got myself a, a nice uh, uh, micarta. And what is this? This is linen micarta with, a, with an inlay of... Um, you know the thing. Come on, man. You know the thing. What is this called? Burlap micarta. Burlap micarta. So just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I uh, can't remember who I got this from, uh, this handle, but there weren't too many out there and uh, someone offered this to me. I was buying um, another, I think I was buying this and the guy offered me this and I took it up. Another great, here, I'll just put this in for size comparison. Uh, this is the XM18 three and a half inch and uh, different blade shape and this has been reground uh, by Josh at, Josh at Razor Edge, who I hear is not doing regrinds anymore. Good for you, Josh. And I say that because I know he, he wanted to pursue his own knives full time. And I guess that's probably why he's not doing regrinds. Um, but this was a fat, fat boy. And he just took it down to a, a hair's width right behind the edge. And um, this, I think, is how the Tanto should be, or the Spanto should be. Flat ground here, hollow ground here. Very thin and slicey. Uh, XM24 to me is the best uh, size hinderer. I just I just like the big ones better. And uh, also the choil is a little more generous. And if you have big sausage fingers, you will appreciate that. Big slab of titanium. Those big standoffs. Oh. This thing is just amazing. S35VN and uh, pretty good action for a non-flipper. Now, I mean, for a non-bearings, uh, non-triway, I have another XM24 that has even better non-bearing action. This, as you can see, is the Warncliffe. Also a place, uh, a, a format in which the beautiful, beautiful Hinderer-designed um, uh, Warncliffe shape 
has room to fully express itself. Uh, I, I do really love this knife too, but to me, it's just not quite as graceful or something. I don't know. This is just more appealing to me. Uh, this is a no-choil version, as you can see, sharpened by Jared Neve. Actually sharpened and re-tipped because I dropped this point down on concrete and, uh, well, he took care of it. Removed a bit of steel to do so, but he had to do what he had to do to make it work. So I was carrying this today. I decided I would just uh, put it put it in front of the camera and um, show it off. I got a big box of knives today. Well, I got the I got the uh, Fox Ryu, which I did a video of. I'm not sure which will go up first. Uh, that was a UPS box. Cut it open with this this morning and forgot how sharp I got it. When I first got this thing, it was sharp, but the work I've done on it has made it. I don't know. Well, sharper. <laughs> and then I got a giant box from Tier 1 full of beautiful custom um, fixed blades, which I'll, I'll show off at some point. And there was quite a bit of tape on this, and this just, uh, you know, as you would expect a expensive, or as you would just expect any knife to do, it cut it, cut it open with a plumb. But I, I just felt good doing it. Felt like I was, uh, you know, like a real man doing it with this. I saw a video, there are not too many videos of this particular knife out there, and I saw one of a gentleman who said, he had a very smoky voice, and he's like, this is a real man's knife. And I was like, you know what, I want a real man's knife. And uh, that was right while I was uh, in uh, in a deep search for this thing. And uh, yeah, I know, I leave myself open for all sorts of comments, but uh, there you go. I'm just sort of mesmerized looking at its beauty through the uh, viewfinder here. I'm going to show it with some other knives, as I love to do. I love comparing knives together, not just for size. I think it's a good, a good thing to show people how things stack up in terms of size. But also knives that, to me, might be on the same shelf or kind of evoke similar, uh, similar um, feelings or reactions or whatever, or purposes. Here it is with the Knight, uh, the Jason Knight designed Fox Knives made tactical elements uh, distributed MK Ultra. Uh, very much so the coolest and and uh, best expression of a kukri in a folding knife that I've ever seen. And here it is with the ever stubborn and totally awesome uh, Medford Praetorian. This was a knife that I thought was so incredibly goofy when I first laid eyes on it. And then uh, once it sort of wheedled its way into my heart, I had to, I had to get one. And uh, this is, uh, to me, the perfect Praetorian. I know it's very simple, very plain Jane, but um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't want it in titanium. It's already pretty, pretty heavy enough. I love this clip better than the, uh, the big, uh, one with the cutout, and it's just a cool knife. Let's see here. Here it is with the new Yo Jumbo. These are all nice, big, about four inch bladed tactical sort of hard use folders. SN SMF. A couple more here. Oh. Here it is with another incredibly beautiful Bowie, the Emerson CQC-13. Now, I love the contrast between these two because these two have two of my favorite Bowies, Bowie blades on folding knives, and they're very different, but uh, both really compelling to me. They both actually work well too. These are these are two of my knives that I've actually used. You know, I've had them long enough. I've had a chance to use them. You know, to be really honest, cutting cutting chores don't come up in my life that much. Uh, certainly not chores. They're more like cutting events <laughs> for me. Oh my gosh, I get to do cardboard. Or look, that thing needs to be cut. Uh, you know, at work or whatever. And um, you know, it's usually not that I'm cutting cardboard with these things at all. There it is with the Recon 
one five and a half inch, so substantially smaller, but another incredible Bowie shape, another incredible Bowie knife, period. This thing is thin. I believe this has a thinner stock than the XM. It does a thinner stock, a much broader blade, and then a full flat grind. This is, this is extremely efficient for cutting and for thrusting, I would imagine. Yep. All right, well, I've yupped and gone on long enough. I just wanted to show this thing off. It is such an incredibly, uh, incredible knife and just beautifully designed. Uh, this is definitely one to show off and be proud of. I love the heat treat that that used to reside in the jimping. I think at this point they've kind of polished that out. This is relatively new. You can see a little bit of it, I guess. Man, these hinderers are so awesome. I'm glad they're exclusive because uh, if they were just a little bit less expensive or half the price, I'd have way too many of them, kind of like uh, some of the other knives I have. So uh, right now I have four and I'm sticking with that until I'm really moved to get something else. And who knows, maybe a Bowie, uh, Bowie bladed full track would do that. I'm just not sure. Uh, not for nothing, if you look at the uh, Ranch Bowie by them, the fixed blade uh, by Rick Hinderer, it's got a very similar blade to this. Looks more like this than the XM uh, 3.5. So you might like that one too. All right. Thanks for watching.